Talk about the difference between the U.S. and Europe when it comes to GMOs. Why are they so radically different in their labeling and, and their approach to GMOs than, than we are here? The, the European press covered the dangers of GMOs uh, in February of 1999. There was a scientist, Dr. Arpad Pustai, who was fired from his job after 35 years, gagged with threats of a lawsuit. Um, he was taken off the, 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 his job altogether. The data was pulled away. And what he was doing, he'd been given three million bucks by the UK government to figure out if GMOs were safe. Not to figure out if GMOs were safe in general, but to figure out the method how to figure out. Mm. So he was creating the protocol that Europe was going to use to evaluate GMOs. It was going to become part of their safety testing protocols. He was a pro-GMO scientist, the top scientist in the world in his field. He worked at one of the top nutritional research labs in the world, the Rowan Institute. His name was Dr. Arpad Pustai. And he discovered quite to his surprise that the generic process of genetic engineering caused massive collateral damage in the DNA and caused damage in nearly every organ and system of his rats in just 10 days. And he realized that the same generic technology, the same generic process is used to produce the GMOs already on the market he went on television with blessings from his director saying, I wouldn't put it in my mouth, we shouldn't be used as guinea pigs. He was, he, he was heralded as a hero by his institute until two phone calls later came from the UK Prime Minister's office and then he was fired the next day, silenced with threats of a lawsuit, etc. When the gag order was lifted on February 16th, 1999, <clears throat> it, it initiated a firestorm of press coverage. Over 700 articles about GMOs were released in one month in the UK alone. And within 10 weeks, the tipping point of consumer rejection in Europe occurred. First Unilever, then Nestle's, then everyone else said, okay, no more GMOs in Europe. But Project Censor described that as that whole affair as one of the 10 most underreported events of the year in the United States. So the United States wasn't covering the GMO issue. Uh, they eventually covered that it could kill monarch butterflies, which is the Bambi of the insect world. And that was what they covered, but they didn't cover the fact that it was inherently dangerous and could cause serious reactions. So European consumers said no. The European sellers of food said, we're not going to sell it to you. The same companies that, that, took, it out of GMO, that took GMOs out of Europe, Nestle's, Unilever, etc., continued to sell GMOs to the unsuspecting U.S. consumer. Until more recently, now Nestle's advertises on television that its coffee creamer is non-GMO and is moving more and more products, same as Unilever, etc.